tried to record this like five times and every time the dogs have started barking. So we're starting over again! Hi! So this week, more on the topic of mental health, I wanted to talk about ways to help yourself stay positive. And you know, I'm a very big believer that what you put out into the world is what you're gonna get back. So if you are always miserable, negative, complaining, and putting out a bunch of negative crap into the world, you're gonna attract more negative crap and feel like crap and be miserable all the time. And misery attracts misery. And because of that, I think it is very important that we learn how to watch what is in our sphere bubble of influence. So it's kind of a weird description. There's probably a better word for that. Um, but what I'm talking about is our relationships and our Facebook news feeds and what we watch on TV. All of those things. Uh, it's just feeding your brain. So what are you feeding your brain? So one of the first things I did years ago with David, um, is, you know, some people might remember around 9-11, TV started to get really scary. News started to get really bad. You don't see a lot of good stories on the news. You only hear about the worst things that are happening on the news. And I also didn't like that with TV, you're kind of a prisoner to the scheduling that they have if you fall in love with the show. Um, and so you're less productive if you need to watch your show that's on. So uh, we got rid of TV years ago. We still have Netflix and David and I love to cuddle up on the couch and watch a movie and that's how we date. And so that's how we date. We cuddle up on the couch, we watch a movie if we have downtime. But honestly, we spend more of our time doing creative things. David has his photography and I like to do my art and my videos and writing and all that stuff. So we spend more time on those things than watching movies. But if we need a little break and we want to do something that's really easy, we will sometimes watch something on Netflix or Prime. Uh, so those that's what we do. We don't have cable. Our TV doesn't go to anything except the internet. In addition to that, a few years back, I started combing through my newsfeed and I got really selective with the types of posts and pages and people and groups that I allowed to fill my Facebook feed. So the things that were negative or just like fake news or just the stuff that really wasn't contributing in a positive way to my life, I went ahead and got rid of it. So I unsubscribed from a lot of things, I unfollowed a lot of pages, I unfollowed and hid um, posts from certain people because sometimes, and I unfriended some people too, uh, but sometimes people are just really negative all the time, they, they only post negative things all the time, and I don't need to see that. I don't need that to be in my in my sphere of influence. I don't need that negativity in my life. Like I said earlier, negativity attracts other negativity and it's just, I don't want it. That can go away. That can be somewhere else. So I don't have that kind of stuff in my social media. And if I ever unfollow you on Twitter or Instagram, it's probably because you had dead puppies or something really terrible. I don't want to see that. So bye. <laughs> and that includes people in real life too. If there are people, like I did, I do friend inventories and I like to really, I'm very choosy with my relationships. I try to look at a relationship with someone and if I feel like I'm a positive influence on that person and they're a positive influence on me and we are positive when we're together and it's just a good thing for us to be friends and, you know, someone contributes something to my life and I have something to contribute to their life, then that's a relationship. But there are certain people that have more bad days than good days and they are just miserable all the stinking time and it doesn't, that you can't snap them out of it. And there's this saying about swimming where if you're not a very strong swimmer, 
you shouldn't jump in to save someone who's drowning because they could take you down with them. And I think toxic and negative people can be like that in a lot of ways. Um, if you have a very low tolerance for bullshit and drama, then don't have people in your life that are all about drama and crap and being negative and just having a bad day because those people are going to drag you down with them and suck you into their misery and their negativity is going to get on you because that shit is contagious. So toxic people, bye-bye, see you later, I don't need you in my life. So that is like really, really important to carefully guard those relationships. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes these people might be your boss, your family members, and that makes these things more complicated. Uh, so maybe it's just cutting back the amount of time you see with these people, depending on how bad it really is. If someone is truly toxic, it doesn't matter who they are. I'm going to cut them out. It just isn't worth my own sanity and my mental health to have someone like that. Because if I'm drowning, I'm not going to be able to help anyone else. So I need to make sure I can keep my own head afloat. Um, so that's kind of what I do. I'm just really aware of how much of an impact negativity can have on me. I know that it's contagious. I just, nope, uh, this is a negativity free zone. Beep. But I really wanted to share that with you because I don't know why it doesn't seem to be common sense because when I was younger, I didn't know this. And as I've grown older, being able to be selective with the kinds of people and things that I let into my life has revolutionized everything about my life. And my life has become so much better and there's no drama and it's just me and the people I care about. And it's just been great. So I want to tell everyone the secret. <laughs> Hopefully it helps you out and have a good